In this video, I'm going to be ranking every single Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass track, so let's get into it. The first track is Paris Promenade. Now, this track actually looks really good, but with all the Wave 1 tracks, it's obviously not going to be that good. I feel like they didn't put much effort into Wave 1, but otherwise, racing on Paris Promenade, it's actually really good, especially how the last lap changes and you go backwards. So overall, I'm going to give this one a B tier. The next track is toad circuit now this track gets a lot of hate and i don't actually like it much but it's still a pretty good track especially for playing because of all the mushroom shortcuts you can take i do think though that this track didn't get much of an upgrade from mario kart 7 and the aesthetic is not very good but still, it's a it's wave one, so it's rushed. You gotta keep that in mind. But anyway, quite a solid track, but definitely not the best, but also definitely not the bottom of my list. You'll see lots of other people putting it at the bottom of their list, but for me, I think it's a C tier. Choco Mountain. Now, I don't know anyone who likes this track, but I also don't know anyone who hates it. Now this is one of the more high quality Wave 1 tracks, but I think they could have made the cave section a little bit more detailed. Like maybe added a split path or something. The boulders near the end do make a little bit of a better challenge to avoid them, but the color of this track is not very nice to look at. So I'm gonna give this track a C tier. Coconut Mall. This is a pretty good track, but I feel like I would have rathered it in like in wave 5 or wave 6 because the quality in that would be much better. But still a pretty nice wave 1 track. You've got split paths, you've got elevators, you've got shortcuts, and it's a pretty nice track. But Nintendo did get a little bit lazy with the car section at the end and they didn't make the move. But then in wave 2, they actually updated the game and made the cars move. So a pretty good thing from Nintendo. But anyway, I don't get that excited excited when I play this track online, but I will still vote it if it comes up in the voting screen. So because of that, I'm going to give this track an A tier. Alright, starting off the Lucky Cat Cup, we have Tokyo Blur. They definitely could have done a few better things with this track. The road is not very detailed, and it's just a boring track. It's almost like a circuit track. It's probably the worst tour track that we got in this whole booster course pass. And for example, the tour track like Athens Dash is way better than this. Again, it is in wave one, so the quality was pretty rushed, but I'm going to give this one a D tier. Next up is Shroom Ridge. There are a lot of mixed opinions on this one. Some people like it, some people hate it. The grass is also like Toad Circuit because it's just one color, but that is again because it's in wave one. The cars driving along the road making traffic is actually a really cool obstacle and there's lots of shortcuts, especially this one at the end is really cool to take and it's one of the most creative shortcuts. So I'm going to give this one a B tier. Now, Sky Garden is definitely a big upgrade from the GBA, but seeing what the other GBA tracks get, like Cheeseland and Ribbon Road, this could have definitely got some better stuff, especially an anti-gravity section. I don't get too upset when I get this track online though, because it does look very good with the white and green, and it's a good idea for a track racing in the sky, but we already have Cloud Top Cruise, so seeing how good that track can be, compared to this one, I'll put it in the B tier. And to end off wave one, we have Ninja Hideaway. This is a tour original track, and it's actually a really high quality track, for, especially for wave one. And this idea of a Mario Kart track, racing in whatever this place is, a Ninja Hideaway, is actually a really good idea. It hasn't been used in a Mario Kart track ever before, and it's really fun to race on, because around every turn there's a new section. So first you start outside, and then you go in the in the building and then there's a glider section it's just full of stuff also a cool piranha plant shortcut which you can break with a green shell or a bomb so i'm gonna give this track an a tier all right starting off wave two we have new york minute this was the first tour track to ever come to mario kart tour and overall is a pretty fun track to race on especially because every lap changes but I don't know anyone who would put this track in the S tier. It's definitely not a track I'd vote online, just since the racing side of things isn't very good. So I'm going to put this one in a C tier. 
It's time. It's Mario Circuit 3. Lots and lots of people put this track in the bottom five of their booster course pass, but I don't mind this track, especially on the racing side of things, since you can take all the shortcuts and make an incredible comeback. Yes, I do agree that the graphics aren't very good. You got this no texture on off-road. This track is not very good of an upgrade from the SNES. But maybe Nintendo were trying to keep the feel of basic tracks. So I'm gonna put this one in the A tier. Now next is Calamari Desert, and this one had a very good idea of changing the second lap to be on the train tracks. And for this one, the off-road is actually textured quite nicely. It's got a few cool shortcuts, and the train as an obstacle as you go through the cave section is actually really hard to avoid. And if you have a superstar, you can overtake everyone with invincibility. I'm gonna put this one in B tier. Yes, this is a good track, but Nintendo definitely forgot about the idea of anti-gravity and they definitely could have put some anti-gravity on this one, which is what Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is known for. But this track has very vibrant colours, has a great soundtrack, and is also very fun to race on. And I also think that the no shortcut part of this track is actually really good because it makes racing actually better because you have to have skill to win this one. You can't just make comebacks. For all these reasons, I'm gonna put this one in the S tier. Next up is Sydney Sprint. Easily the best tour track in the game and it goes all the way through Sydney. You start off going through the Opera House and then you go along the Harbour Bridge. It's just a great track, especially because you go backwards on that too. The soundtrack's also awesome and front running this track is just so fun in my opinion. So I'm gonna put this one in the A tier. GBA Snowland also shows how much Sky Garden could have been improved. This track looks very good, but also is really fun to race on with the huge shortcut. It's actually the biggest shortcut in the game. You've also got the penguins walking along the track as obstacles, and it still keeps the super circuit vibe with the colored blocks. So I'm gonna put this one in the S tier. Mushroom Gorge is another awesome track. But it is a Wii track, which we have so many in the Boost Course Pass, but it's still a good one. You've got the gap jump, you've got all the mushrooms, which you can do super bounces off. You've even got the glider mushroom. You've got lots of split paths, and it's a great track to race on. Especially doing the gap jump at the end of lap 3, and making a comeback to win the race. I'm always very happy when this track gets chosen online, and I'm never upset to race on it. So for that, this one in the S tier. Ending off wave 2, we've got Sky High Sunday. This track is entirely in anti-gravity, which is a first for the booster course pass, and it's also brand new to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I can tell that it's brand new by how much better it looks. You've got lots of split paths on this track, and tricking off every jump is always very fun. It's also very colourful, but it still keeps the ice cream theme along the whole track with waffle cones to trick off, ice cream cones on the final turn, and a freezer at the starting line. But this track is an oval, just like Excite Bike and Baby Park. But this shows how good an oval track can be. So this is going in the A tier. All right, wave three, and we've got London Loop. This is one of the most confusing tracks in the game. I just can never remember the layout. Also, the fog in the sky doesn't really make it look good. And all the buildings are basically the same brownish color. This is one of the tracks that's actually not very fun to race on. Although you do have a few big shortcuts to make comebacks. But I'm putting this one in the D tier. GBA Boo Lake is another GBA track that's got a huge upgrade as you go underwater for half the track. It's also got anti-gravity and basically everything that's been included in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Jumps at the end are always very fun to trick off and this shortcut saves so much time. It also keeps the spooky feel of the track which they were going for by making it dark and making the background Luigi's Mansion. I'm gonna put this track in the B tier. Alpine Pass is also like Toad Circuit. 
having the grass have no texture. But I actually think that that improves the track and makes everything else stand out more. Like this gravelly road and the trees. It's also got one of the biggest gliding sections in the game. And if you take this huge shortcut on the right, it's very fun to catch up with. Overall, the track isn't very good, but racing on it is one of the best tracks to race on. But putting everything together, I'm gonna put this track in the B tier. I almost feel like Maple Treeway got a downgrade from Wii. I do like the Wrigglers walking around as an obstacle right in the middle of the track, but I feel like this track is definitely missing something. It does have two gliders, half pipes are cool, but it definitely could have had some anti-gravity or some underwater sections. I do like the theme of the track being an autumn track, and Nintendo did stick to the theme by keeping basically the whole track orange. So I'm gonna put this one in an A tier. Tour Bowland Byways is just like London Loop, having an almost almost the same difficulty to remember the layout. But I do like the obstacle of the cars moving along the track, just like Shroom Ridge. I feel like it adds the more needed difficulty to this track. This track also has you go through lots of landmarks, and you get a few split paths and shortcuts. Overall though, I don't know what it is about this track, but I just don't get excited when I play this track. The music is really good as well though, but there's something wrong about this. And that's the reason why most people don't vote it online. So I'm gonna put this one in the D tier. Peach Garden's got a huge upgrade from the DS by having the third lap go backwards. It's also very fun to take this huge shortcut right at the start and get into first place. The idea of this track is not very creative as most of the tracks just are the same which is basically just racing around on grass and it basically has nothing to do with peach and I don't see why it's called peach gardens but looking at this track it looks very good and playing this track it's very fun to play so I gotta put this track in the S tier. Merry Mountain is another track that's come straight from tour and I feel like those tracks are really good I don't know what makes them so good, but it's it just is. It also came out in Wave 3, which released in winter. The gliding section at the end is always cool, and it's pretty neat that it opens only on lap 2 and 3. There's also split paths, which you can actually take the train track path, or you can just take the bottom path. You have lots of choice at the top of the mountain. You could take the much faster shortcut. You could risk not getting an item box by going for the spinning item box. Or you could go way outside and guarantee that you get a double item box from the half pipe. This track has lots of choice and is very fun to race on. But looking at it, it's not that nice. It's basically just another snow track like Sherbet Land, Ice Ice Outposts. So I'm gonna put this one at a B tier. And ending off wave 3, we got 3DS Rainbow Road. This is easily the best Rainbow Road in the game because it feels like every turn you're experiencing something new. You start off going around a planet and then you get to bounce on a rainbow bounce pad and then you go to the moon. And ending off lap 3, you go through this spinning tunnel, get a glider and have one last turn before you end it. It's also got anti-gravity which is really cool and it's very fun to race on. I remember my first time playing this track, I was just surprised the whole way through. Also the chain trumps as obstacles on the moon add some choice. So I'm gonna put this one in the S tier. Wave 4 was one of the best waves this booster course pass, if not the best. And the first track is Amsterdam Drift. Now this is one of the more forgettable tour tracks, it just feels like it goes by so quickly. It's basically only got three sections. Just the street section, the underwater section, and the flower section. This is a pretty cool track, but it just doesn't stand out to me very much. So I'm gonna put this one in the C tier. GBA Riverside Park is another great track. The walking piranha plants also add a really great obstacle, and the new cave section is really cool. This track also looks really good, but this track is also, like all the other tracks, just basically themed around an overworld environment. So I'm gonna put this in the A tier. DK Summit is actually my favorite track in the game. The gap cut also makes it really fun and the whole going down a mountain thing is a really cool idea. Now this is one of the tracks that's not just a normal idea like Riverside Park or Mario Circuit and it also adds lots of half pipes. 
This track looks really good and is also really fun to race on. So I'm gonna put it in the S tier. Yoshi's Island is another new track to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And as I said before, I don't know what it is about these new tracks to Mario Kart Tour and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but they're all just really good. This track has so much variety and it really reminds me of the Yoshi's Island game. Especially the shortcut at the end with, the, with hitting the flying question block is such a creative idea. The soundtrack is also just like Yoshi's Island and it's really fun to race on as well. You've got walking shy guys as obstacles, you've got a cloud section and you've even got an underwater section. This track basically adds everything. So I'm gonna put this in the S tier. Tour Bangkok right? is easily the worst tour track. It's just not a fun track to race on. It does look pretty good, but there's something about it that just makes it not fun to actually race on. You've got bouncing tents. I feel like this track definitely belongs in the D tier. DS Mario Circuit is easily the best Mario Circuit in the game, especially because of this forest section. It's also really fun to play in a race and especially online, as you can take all the shortcuts and make an incredible comeback. You've got Piranha Plant spitting out fire, makes a really cool obstacle, and you've even got walking Goombas for an obstacle. This track has everything that a Mario Circuit track should have, and I wish that all other Mario Circuits were like this. So I'm gonna give this one a B tier. Waluigi Stadium is another track that's got a huge upgrade and it's a track that looks like it's not from the booster course pass aesthetically. The reflection on the mud is really cool and it's one of my favorite tracks in the game. The spinning fire, the metal piranha plant cutouts, the half pipes, the glider, the trick ramps, the dash panels, the shoomless shortcuts, everything about this track is great and I couldn't really ask for much better. So this one's going in the S tier. And ending off wave 4, we have Singapore Speedway. This track is definitely one of the good tour tracks, but it's one of the more forgettable ones as well. I think it's just because of the forgettable layout, which Nintendo actually really needs to work on. I think if Nintendo forgot about the tour tracks, we could have got a lot better tracks in this booster course pass. But Singapore Speedway is a good track to race on and I'm pretty happy when we get to race on it. So it's going in the B tier. Starting off wave 5, it's Athens Dash. This just shows how good a tour track should be. You race through Athens and it's perfectly showing all the landmarks while also making it a really fun track to race on. The idea of this track is actually a really good one and I can't think of any other Mario Kart track like it. I mostly like this track because of how good it looks, but it's also pretty fun to race on. And the glider section starting lap 3 is also really cool. So I'm gonna give it an A tier. Daisy Cruiser is not a very good track in my opinion, just because of the lack of shortcuts. Maybe if there were some cool shortcuts I'd like it more, but I feel like this track just basically got no improvement from GCN. It's basically just the same thing but in higher quality. Like showing how much DS Mario Circuit can be improved from the DS, this track definitely needs some work. Yes, the path choice is pretty cool. You can either go underwater or you can go up top, which is faster. And the tables rocking side to side is one of the most creative obstacles in the game. But this track isn't very good, so I'm gonna put it in C tier. I don't know how many highway tracks they want in this game, but Nintendo clearly wants a lot. Moonview Highway is just pretty boring because it's basically just like Toad's Turnpike and Shroom Ridge. Although it does have a few different paths at the start and dash panels which actually switch every time you play, it's not that much of an interesting track. It's just another boring Mario Kart track that you just race on the road. So I'm giving this one a C tier. Squeaky Clean Sprint is another new track to Mario Kart 8 and it's actually a pretty good one. The wedding ring and the drain, the sponges, 
all the different paths which you get to take. It's just a great track and it's also a really good idea. It's just like Ruben Road racing through someone's room but instead the room is a bathroom. I especially like the I especially like how you get to take the top path on lap two and three by going off the water fountain that comes out of the toilet. That's a really cool idea for a shortcut and this track is definitely a good one. It's even pretty fun to race on and it looks good. It's even got half pipes. So I'm gonna give this one an A tier. Los Angeles Laps is just another boring tour track. And while the soundtrack is good, the actual racing on this track and how it looks is not very good. Like imagine if they replaced this track with Wario Coliseum or Piranha Plant Pipeline. That would have been much better than this track. And it's just very boring to race on also. It's basically like another street track just like Moonview Highway but with a little bit more variety. So I'm gonna put this one in the C tier. Next up is GBA Sunset Wilds and also seeing what Cheeseland and Ribbon Road can do with a GBA track, this one's not too good. The only elevation it has is the two jumps at the end. I do like the Schumler shortcut though and the Shy Guys as obstacles but I feel like this track definitely could have got a bit of an upgrade. Imagine if they made you go underground for half the track in a tunnel. Also, we can't forget about the sun not setting in this game. In Mario Kart Tour and in GBA, the sun actually set ev more and more every lap. But in this game, Nintendo just got lazy and forgot to do that. This track is pretty fun to make a comeback on though. And also the texture of the off-road is pretty nice, but this track definitely could have got a much needed upgrade. So it's going in B tier. Wii Cooper Cape is yet another Wii track and I feel like this one's a good one. But Nintendo definitely downgraded the underwater section because in Wii it was more like a pipe and it had more obstacles down there. I do like the half pipes and the whole idea of the track but I feel like this track is almost like Cheap Cheap Beach. The shortcuts are very fun to take though and it does look pretty nice. So I'm giving this one a B tier. Vancouver Velocity is yet another tour track. I don't know how many we're gonna get in this game. And this one's just like the other ones. It's conf it's a confusing layout and hard to remember. I don't really have anything to say for this one. I'm just gonna put it straight in the D tier. Starting off wave six, we got Roma Vanti. Now this is yet another tour track, but this is one of the better tour tracks. This track definitely looks good aesthetically wise but playing it I don't really get excited to play it and it's just a boring track so it's going in C tier. DK Mountain. This track is in my top three along with Waluigi Stadium and DK Summit. This one is basically just like DK Summit and I like it almost as much. Especially the colors fit really nicely. And I feel like this track, although it didn't get an upgrade from GCN, I feel like it didn't need one. I feel like just having it like the original is best. It's got a cannon glider, it's got half pipes, and I really like the bridge at the end where you have to try and get as many tricks as you can by shaking your controller. And we can't forget about the gap jump. This is one of the coolest shortcuts in the game along with the Mushroom Gorge one and the DK Summit one. And it's also very easy and shroomless. I feel like in a DLC, See, Nintendo actually likes shortcuts a bit more because in the base game they kind of left out a few shortcuts. Anyway, this is definitely a great track, fun to race on and it looks very good. So it's going in the S tier. And yet another Wii track, we have Daisy Circuit. I do think that this track looks good but it's just another boring road track to race on. The cool Piranha Plant shortcut is very nice and the bronze statues fit very well with the theme of this track, but I feel like it's just another track. They could have called it P 
peach circuit, put a peach statue and called it a day. There's nothing that really stands out about this track. So it's going in the B tier. And as I said earlier, I don't know what it is about the new tracks, but Piranha Plant Cove is definitely a great one. Now I'm pretty sure this track came from Tua, but I'm not sure. Wherever it came from, it's a good one. The Shroomla shortcuts definitely add a lot to this track, and the route changing every lap is very cool. And this is one of the tracks that's not just another Mario Kart track. It actually has a good theme and it sticks to the theme nicely. It's even got a glider section, which Mario Kart 8 Deluxe loves to include in their tracks. So this track is getting an A. Starting off the last cup in the game, we got Tua Madrid Drive. This soundtrack is a good one. Aesthetically, it just basically looks like the other tracks, but I don't know what it is about this track, but I find it really fun to race on. It might just be that I'm good at it, or the cool shortcuts, like the shortcut through the crowd, but I think this track is a pretty fun one to race on. It doesn't look very nice, it basically just looks like all the other two are tracks, but as I said before, it's very fun to race on. So it's going in the beat. Rosalina's Ice World. Now this one, I don't know anyone who actually put this track in S tier, but I also don't know anyone who'd put this track in D tier. I think that this track is almost identical to Sherbet Land, and it's just another snow track, and it has nothing to do with Rosalina. I do like though that in the sky you can see the planets from Mario Galaxy, and getting on the top path on lap 2 and 3 with the half pipe is always very fun. But I'm gonna have to put this track in C tier. Second last track track and we've got SNES Bowser's Castle. Now this is what all of the SNES tracks should look like. It's got anti-gravity, it's got huge shortcuts, and it's got a few split paths. And it's still just like the original, except it looks a lot better. This is actually one of the SNES tracks that's very fun to race on. And I always like taking the far left path and hoping that I don't get hit by the fire. Everything about this track just shows what, what we needed and wave 6. So I'm putting this in S tier. And last but not least, we have Wii Rainbow Road. Not the best Rainbow Road in the game, but still a good one. And I feel like everyone knew that we would get this in wave 6. Anyway, this track's got basically everything. Half pipes, gliders, split paths, and I especially like the shortcut at this half pipe where you can just cut right inside. Anyway, basically just like another Rainbow Road track, but it's also got a good soundtrack and it looks pretty good. So I'm giving this track an A tier. And that's all the tracks in the Booster Course Pass ranked. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe since I am a channel trying to grow and it would really help me out. My Nintendo Switch friend request code is on the screen right now and in the description. So make sure to friend request me if you want to play with me. And with that said, you know all the good tracks and all the bad tracks in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Let me know your rankings in the comments. See ya! Yeah.